Okay. Ooh. Is this thing on? It, tap, tap, tap. I don't even know if it's on. Is it on? Hello? It's on. It's finally on. Okay. Why didn't I learn my lines? What are you doing? Huh? Do you guys want to do a line? I said, you learn your line, how to do a line. Yeah, I feel like that's uh, a good thing for comics. All right. I was going to do my Gene Wilder walk on, but I'm too old for that shit. It's a wicked mess out there right now. Who would have ever thought? Zoom meetings, protests, killer bees, apparently a freaking dust cloud the size of Texas. Wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Wait, take that back. Wear a mask. Got to wear gloves. Ventilator's good. Ventilator's bad. It lasts for days on surfaces. No, wait, no, it doesn't. Oh my God, I touched that. Did you just touch that? No, wait, who touched it first? Did you sanitize? I sanitize. Is the sanitizer sanitized? What the fuck? This isn't sanitizer, it's vodka. Drink it. No, that's what Clorox is for. Where's the toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It's hard. It's hard to follow the rules. It's hard not to touch your face. Meanwhile, my kids are all, yeah. <laughs> oh shit, they don't know. They don't even care. There's no coronavirus to them. It's been tough having kids through this. Oh, but it's a great opportunity to bond with your family. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Every day? No. If you drink too much water, it'll kill you. Six months straight? It's like I've been quarantined in a Jumanji game with two rabid monkeys leaving a path of destruction everywhere they go. There's no escape. Every roll just gets worse. He's a small size package, but you can't ignore his man sized poops. Just wait till he's four. <laughs> Seriously, this kid shits like a foot and a half long. Roll again. Constant attention is what they crave. If you think you're the boss, but you're only the slave. <laughs> oh, I'm trapped. Kids have no school. No sports, no sleepovers, no breaks. And I'm home more than ever. There's not even any new Disney movies to plug them into. They've seen Moana so many times. I thank my son for cleaning up his toys and he's, what can I say, but hey, you're welcome. My daughter's all rowing by. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even want them watching TV. But it's the only time we get a break. So we got them into arts and crafts. But now I'm getting creeped out all day by these stick family pitches. Is this how I look to my kids? Like the demon from the grunge? I've got big dilated eyes, a misplaced smile, and disportioning arms all the way to the ground, scurrying about the hallways. Finish your dinner. Pick up your toys. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, we've been quarantined so long, we're all getting bored. So I started critiquing their work. Here, Daddy, I made a rock for you. Uh, you made a rock? <laughs> yeah, it came from outer space. I covered it with unicorn poo to make it magical. <laughs> uh, no you didn't. It's a fucking rock. 
<laughs> my son runs up. Here, Daddy, I drew you this. Uh, you drew a line? No, it's a telephone pole. Uh, if it were a telephone pole, it would have a cross beam, six gauge wire. This, this is a line, and you're wasting paper. <laughs> Ugh, most of the time, I can't even tell what they've drawn. We've adopted the phrase, I imagine it looks like, because my son draws a lot of rocket penises. <laughs> what if this COVID continues? I can't send him back to school. It's a freaking germ factories. They're always sick. It's like having the Tasmanian devil in your house, but he's on crack and infected with germs. <laughs> if I send him to school during this shit, if your kid comes home sick, the thought that your child could possibly have the Rona, that would absolutely give me a fucking heart attack. Of course, uh, the government would still call it a COVID-related death. I'm pretty healthy. I don't get sick often. Take my vitamins. Problem for me is anytime someone else is sick, someone walks by me coughing, all of a sudden I'm. <coughs> <coughs> my, th my, th my throat's kind of scratchy too. <laughs> and it's not limited to sickness. I was watching football. <laughs> yeah, no, not recently. Tom Brady twists his ankle. He limps off the field. My brain automatically goes into self-diagnostic mode. Like, Tom Brady just twisted his ankle. What chance do you have? Does that hurt? How about that? Are your tendons intact? Cartilage? Uh, yep, yep, there's something wrong. I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I might be a hypochondriac. But as soon as I saw this COVID, the symptoms list for this COVID, I knew it was all over for me. Fever or chills? Well, I do now. Shortness of breath? Maybe. Fatigue? I'm tired every night. Muscle or body aches? At 40? Is that even a fair question? Headache? I got kids. Loss of taste? Ever since I got married. <laughs> Runny nose? What? Runny nose is a sign? Honey, I got the Rona. <laughs> what the list goes on. Nausea, sore throat, cough, congestion, vomiting, and diarrhea. <laughs> Sound familiar? That's right. These fools, these fools we are listening to, got the information from the back of a Pepto bottle. <laughs> so, obviously, they're full of shit. <laughs> Seriously, though, this list of the symptoms, this is all the symptoms. There's nothing left. This is all the fucking symptoms there are for humans to have. For anything. <laughs> like you go to the doctor and he'll say, well, it looks like that nasty fall fractured your clavicle, but it also might be AIDS. Better sanitize your groceries. <laughs> Maybe Elon was right. It's just a conspiracy to keep us all in check. There's plenty of conspiracies out there, though. Came from bats. The Chinese did it to tank our economy. The Democrats did it to oust Trump. But some of them are even more outrageous. They read like a Scientology book, including the spaceship. My buddy's a total conspiracy theorist. He tells me how Dr. Fauci is behind all of it because he owns a drug company and when he's ready, he will release the cure and rule the world. That little old dude 
Eh, I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess he is the same height as Hitler. <laughs> then he tells me how Bill and Melinda Gates are getting back at us for not listening to their pandemic warnings years ago. Listen, it's apparent Melinda's obviously bitter that despite all her money, she still can't stand and pee. <laughs> but come on. The only plot Bill's old ass has is his solid gold gravestone. <laughs> I mean, he handled that job shit already, right? <laughs> <laughs> Then he tells me, this is a step towards fascism, a test to control the world. And the government is going to project a giant spaceship across the sky, like Batman style, to make it look like we are all being invaded by aliens in some sort of War of the Worlds type movie, and that they are going to attack unless we comply. <laughs> this is a real thing. There are people that live among us that believe this. Yeah, these are the same people that still believe the world is flat and that have town discussions about Bigfoot's land rights. But the scary thing? These people vote! <laughs> so many stories. But this, this is the greatest. So I own a restaurant. And my dishwasher and I are talking outside. He starts telling me a story, but I could tell he's hesitant. I let him know our words are in total confidence and strictly between us. So he confides in me very secretively. He tells me that his best friend, who has top-level security clearance, called him up drunk late last night and confided in him how this all went down. So he says, his friend said, I'm not supposed to say, but I've been working undercover for a lab in China. And I watched the Chinese create this virus, and I saw as they purposely smashed a test tube full of it in a crowded subway. What? I look at him dead in the eyes. You know you're a dishwasher, right? <laughs> Come on. The entire world in turmoil. Empires crumbling. Infection everywhere. With every country's highest level undercover operatives, the CIA, FBI, KGB, on the job, the informant, the guy that breaks his case wide open. Is my fucking dishwasher? <laughs> Shit. No wonder we elected Trump. Ah, <laughs> uh, but the preppers, they heeded the warnings. This was the moment they had been waiting for. They got the underground bunker ready with a 10-year supply of spam and toilet paper. Who the fuck saw that coming? <laughs> You've seen these people. These are the people that fantasize about being Rambo in a post-apocalyptic world. They drive around in those outrageously lifted Jeeps with, and trucks with the giant tires and the body armor, the extra gas tank, and that weird-looking snorkel exhaust. For one, they have to drive through a river full of zombie blood, right? <laughs> so basically... If the world comes to an end, and the result is just like The Walking Dead, and these eyes are probably good. <laughs> but if anything else, if the more realistic scenario, like Russia invades and takes over, what are these guys gonna do? You get out of my house. I got a big truck and I'm fixing to run you down. <laughs> That's kind of Irish and country, a little bit of both right there. Speaking of douchemobiles, what the fuck is with this black smoke mafia? Have you seen these hillbillies? These are the giant diesel pickups with the enormous muffler sticking in the air. They romp on the gas and it, 
leaves a giant cloud of black smoke in your face? Has no other purpose. You're literally buying this truck solely to be a douche. So let me make something clear. I'm East Coast Italian. I know mafia. These guys are no mafia. The real mafia doesn't walk in declaring, hey, oh, here we are. We are the mafia. <laughs> They're not wearing name tags that say Joey Bag of Donuts, mafia. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure you'd get whacked if you drove that piece of shit truck on the East Coast. So I came up with a more appropriate name for you. How about the diesel fume dumbasses? <laughs> get you. I bought a truck, not one of those, but with all the 0% financing out there, I couldn't resist. The deals were so good, I got one with all the bells and whistles, all leather, a wicked sound system, and air-conditioned seats. Have you seen this? This has got to be the greatest invention ever. It blows cold air right through the seat and literally cools your ass off. <laughs> so. I'm in my new truck, and I'm loving it. Got my dash AC blowing up my face. Rocking out the Ace of Bass. And the seat AC is cooling my balls. Life is good. But I had a lot of protein today. I'm feeling extra gassy. <laughs> so it's a new truck, so normally I would wait. I don't want to lose that new car smell. <laughs> But since I have air-conditioned seats, I figure it'll blow it away. And no harm, no foul. So I let one out. That's when I realized the folly of my ways. You see, the, AC, the seat AC blows up. So it immediately blew the fire directly in my face, which I kind of expected. <laughs> but then something unexpected happened. Just as the thought was about to ascend past my nose, the AC in the dashboard blew at it and pushed it down, thus creating a recirculating cyclone effect, or as I've come to call it, a thought funnel. <laughs> <laughs> so now I am stuck in this continuous thought funnel longer than I would have ever imagined, forced to smell my own shit. But everyone likes their own brand, right? <laughs> the future does have an upside. Keeps people at distance. It's a great way for some alone time. And now, when I get pulled over, cops never get close enough to smell my breath. <laughs> my businesses are hurting through this. What do you think happened at the Corona Brewery? Personally, I'd have taken advantage of the situation. If I was a marketing team, I'd be like, okay, boys, they named a pandemic after us. I've got our new slogan. The better way to give Corona to a friend. <laughs> and for our college demographic, when you're not social distancing, it's Corona time. And my favorite, Corona. So good, it's contagious. <laughs> well, for you extra sensitive types out there, throw a killer party with Corona. <laughs> what, too soon? Okay, okay, relax. I'm just trying to help a business out, you know? But uh, that's the kind of shit that goes viral. Just saying. Whew. Another good drink. Ah, my restaurant's hanging in there. You'd think people would be nicer right now. But with everyone stuck at home, they are blogging more than ever. And everyone's a food critic. They come to restaurants just looking for imperfections. Anything to elicit a viral Facebook post. It could be a fingerprint on a plate, piece of tomato stem, or well, that golden ticket, a free dessert. Waiter, there's a hair in my food. Sir, could that be your hair? It is the same color. 
How insulting. My hair is caramel brown, and that's clearly chestnut. <laughs> Here's my problem with the whole, waiter, there's a hair in my food. First of all, it's a hair. It's not like it's a dead bug or a baby's arm. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fucking hair. According to the FDA, the average person eats 200 pieces of hair every day. And it's not like it's my hair. I wear a fucking chef's hat. <laughs> Could it be my service? Sure. Could it be just floating around in the air like hair tends to do? Could it be yours? Yeah. Yes, it could. <laughs> Look, I'm not saying we serve our pasta entangled in a rat's nest of Rapunzel here. <laughs> but what control do I actually have to prevent it from drifting onto your plate? Nothing. But yet, if a customer finds a hair, suddenly, I'm the dog that shit on the carpet. I might as well have been fucking that bowl of pasta and the hair was one of my clothes. <laughs> But I'm Manscaped, so it's not mine either. <laughs> mm. Truth is, Americans expect too much for their dollar. Especially when they go out to eat. We'd like some more bread and butter before our meal. You know why restaurants fail more than any other business? Because you bitches won't give up your free bread and butter. Listen, you can't have minimum wage go up every year and still live in a world where you get your, you and your best girl a soda pop for a nickel. <laughs> it's not happening. Let me put this into perspective. Let's say you order a $40 entree. If you were to buy those exact ingredients and cook it at home, you'd be left with about $12 which is a restaurant's profit. But that's before you consider you're getting a professional chef-made meal, a bartender, beautiful ambiance, and your own personal butler for two hours. All that, all for 12 fucking dollars. <laughs> and somehow, if one tiny thing, anything, even something completely out of my control, if everything isn't perfect, then it's bing, 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 bing. Lights go off. You stand up. Over here, over here. I got a winner over here. Bring, bring me my free food. Hi, hi. Yes, I, I found a flaw, and I would like a free des dinner for four. And will that include appetizer and dessert? Oh, and alcohol, right? Because if you don't, I'm going to give you a one-star review. <laughs> And they do. <laughs> and they do. And they always make it sound so much more dramatic. Don't come here. I found a hair. It definitely wasn't my hair. I don't care if it was the same color. It wasn't mine. <laughs> Can't believe this place doesn't have butter. What kind of place doesn't have butter for their bread? I'm never coming back, and I'm telling all my friends. Seriously. <laughs> a week later, this bitch comes back. She brings her own butter. <laughs> you need butter that bad? Really? This other one says, I gave him less food because he's Asian. <laughs> like, guys, I'm cooking 20 different dishes. I got time to peer through a packed restaurant to see if there's any Asians I can piss off out there today. How the fuck does that make sense? Do I benefit by giving you less pasta? Or if you order a pizza, is there gonna, gonna be a slice missing? <laughs> uh, on second thought, maybe this is a rampant issue. Maybe restaurants around the world are purposely underfeeding Asians. I mean, maybe that's how they stay so thin. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be, you come to a restaurant to enjoy their food. Even if it was McDonald's, you wouldn't change a Big Mac. That's why you came there. The most you do is ask for extra ketchup. But now, people are, 
I'll take the Big Mac with no bread and extra special sauce. And I brought my own dairy-free cheese. <laughs> Doesn't matter, even, even if you're a Michelin star chef. For tonight, our chef has prepared a braised short rib in a beautiful burgundy reduction sauce. This will be served over handmade angel hair pasta that was blessed by the Pope himself. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, but I really woke up wanting spaghetti this morning. And instead of burgundy sauce, can you just put some cheese on it? I just like cheese! <laughs> <laughs> What if you, what if when you went over to your friend's house for dinner, they acted that way? Oh, it's been so long. So happy to see you. Oh, you're making spaghetti and meatballs? I was kind of feeling like seafood. Can you put a little calamari on mine? Oh, and make it a cheesy cream sauce. I don't feel like marinara. <laughs> I told you we shouldn't have invited her. Can you believe she brought her own butter? <laughs> sucks, though. It sucks, it sucks you can't say anything to these douches. You can't respond negatively to any bad reviews, even if they're wrong. If you do, you're an asshole. The only thing you can say is, I'm so sorry, here's your free dessert. I, I wish there was a website like for rating the guests, a Yelp for bad customers. There could be categories, the like gluten-free fucks. <sighs> Pasta's amazing. Why is this still a thing? <laughs> the vegans. Look, nobody likes you, just stay home. <laughs> the corkage crowd. I brought my own wine because it's special. No, you brought your own wine because you're cheap. <laughs> If only, <laughs> if only we could give the customers ratings, then maybe these bitches would be nicer if there was consequences. Hi, I would like a reservation for two for Courtney. <laughs> hmm, right. Looks like you're coming up as only a one-star customer. So we don't have room for you tonight. What, 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 what do you mean? I, I'm a great customer. No, I can see that you only post reviews when they're negative. <laughs> and looks like you only dine out when there's a coupon. <laughs> Says here you've reached, you've received three free desserts in the last month. <laughs> That's a big red flag. Uh, you also have two children under five. Oh, and you're Asian. <laughs> <sighs> so that's an automatic loss of star. Plus says here that you bring your own butter. <laughs> yeah, um, you'll need to show some progress first. I suggest dining out at some lunch spots and leaving a large tip. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just too much of a risk. So try again when you get that taken care of, okay? <laughs> uh, this COVID hit. We had to change gears quick. Mm. I went from fine dining at the Ritz to five guys, burgers, and fries. <laughs> so I signed up with all these delivery companies. These companies, man. You know how at first Uber wasn't screening their employees and people were getting raped and murdered? That's what's happening with these food delivery companies. Not that they're raping my customers. Well, not that I know of. <laughs> a hot and gooey pizza in the hands of a stone horny teenager? You've all seen American Pie. I even had a freaking prostitute come in for a delivery pickup. But I applaud her. I mean, she's holding down two jobs. And think how productive that is. She's already working the street. And what a great way to meet new clients. Hi there. I came as soon as I could. I hope your pizza's still hot. I have your linguine and clam. I was going to toss your salad, but the dressing squirted all over me. <laughs> I suppose that's my tranny voice. <laughs> all right. Enough of this COVID shit. Tired of talking about it.
tired of hearing about it. The world is changing, though. Real problem? Passwords. Uh, everything needs a password. But not really. Some of them make sense. Your personal records, your bank info. I get it. But there's too many. And they're getting more and more complicated every day. And some of these companies have ridiculous requirements. I signed up for a food recipe app. And they wanted an eight-digit password with uppercase, lowercase, numeric, and a special character. But also, my password could not have any repeating characters. So no letters and numbers. And the kicker, it couldn't have any real words <laughs> for a food app. <laughs> I think the hackers are dying to steal my recipe. But the images thing, have you seen this? Images thing, that's got to be the worst, most stressful of them all. This is where it shows you a puzzled picture, and it says pick out the squares that have a street light in them. So it's a far away wide shot with a typical street broken into puzzle-like pictures. Some of the squares clearly have a street light. But what does one consider a street light? Sure, you're thinking the light's on the side of the road, right? Okay, but when broken down, what exactly are we talking about? Is it the pole? Is the light shining from the bulb? Does that count? What if the light's off? What if there's a pole with no light? What if there's a flag on the pole? If a pole counts, surely a light secured to a building would make the building count. So how literal are we being with this? There's no indication. It just says street light. Do you want the light? Do you want the bulb? Or do you want the whole pole? Does it have to be the whole pole and the light? Is it just the bulb? Is it just the light? Is it the whole fucking thing? What is it? For God's sakes, I can't handle this pressure. I didn't come here to take my SATs. I just came here to see some bouncing boobies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boobies. Ooh. That's empty. So, it happened over time. But one day, I realized it would be more efficient to shave in the shower. Water's on, softens your skin, and girls shave their legs in the shower. So, why can't I? So, I'm shaving in the shower. And it's great. But then, I start thinking. I could save even more time if I brush my teeth in the shower, too. I mean, I'm in here already. I'll save on water, and I get to enjoy a nice, relaxing shower. Makes sense, right? But then, one day, I had just moved to a new apartment, and I'm coming home from work, and I see a utility truck outside. The workers tell me they had to shut off my water because of a sewage block. And that's when I realized. I mean, I guess I never really thought of it. But the water from your house, your drinking water, the sink, the shower, and even the toilet, it all goes the same place. I guess until then I thought it was separated in some sort of Good water, bad water, recycling bin? But it was then that I had a brilliant idea. A real game changer. If all the water from my house ends up in the same place, if it's all going the exact same place my poop goes, then why have I been wasting time using the toilet? <laughs> I mean, I'm already in the shower. I'm going to save shitloads of time. <laughs> Long gone are the days 
when I stop halfway through my shower? No, no. Now, I just let her rip. <laughs> and if you ain't laughing, it's because you do it too. Speaking of shit, I'm in the kitchen drinking my morning coffee as my wife comes in from the garden. And she says, it's too hot outside. I can't go out today. Oh, yeah? Why is that, hun? The sun makes me poop. <laughs> <laughs> what? So we're apparently at that stage of our relationship. Oh, she's sweet. She's always looking out for me. She sees I'm stressed about getting older. So she buys me this hair loss shampoo. Supposed to make it grow back. Somehow. So I start using it. But then I start thinking, how does this shit work? Apply the scalp, massage into lather, and rinse. Okay, it's like every other shampoo ever. So if it's not a leave-in product, and it's literally on my head for like 60 seconds, must be some sort of instant growth hair serum. But if it works that fast, what happens when I wash it away? Is it going to produce hair everywhere it touches? What's to stop it? Is it going to give me hairy palms? Will it leave a waterfall-like coat of hair down my back? Will it pool at my feet and give me hairy toes? Actually, I'm Italian, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> but I don't think that shampoo works. But my wife found something that, that does. She gives me this pamphlet for a hair loss pill. Looking into it, this could be the real deal. It's doctor approved, clinically tested, guaranteed results. I'm excited. But you know that old adage, if it's too good to be true? Hmm. I'm, I'm reading a small print on this wonder pill. There's a few side effects. Irritated scalp, well, okay, to be expected. Swollen feet? That's weird. <laughs> Loose stool? <sighs> I can handle that. A small price to pay. But then, the last one? May cause impotency. <laughs> Let me say that again. The side effects of this hair growth medicine is a limp dick. <laughs> now, obviously, the drug company knows their target audience. So, what the actual fuck? <laughs> I mean, what other reason would a man or a woman want to fix a receding hairline? Besides attracting a mate, there isn't one to look good. So you can get a mate to get a job so you can have money to buy nice things to impress your mate to feel good so you can have confidence when finding a mate okay then and why do we want to attract a mate for fucking <laughs> so tell me mr hair grow company what good is a head full of hair when your prescription guarantees, not that I won't, but that I can't get laid. <laughs> can't they just make a drug that has good side effects? Like happy thoughts or youthful skin? <laughs> or better yet, may cause extreme muscles, reduce body fat, and a giant penis? Popping those bitches like pets. I 
Ah. Or you take a pill and suddenly you got superpowers like Captain America. Um, excuse me, but that was a super soldier serum. Yeah, fucking dork. <laughs> but really, is this the only option? So I can either look like Ron Jeremy with no hair and a rock hard cock, <laughs> or I can have golden locks like Chris Helmworth <laughs> and a flaccid pee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, honey. Looks like you'll be fucking Ron Jeremy from now on. <laughs> Where's my bourbon boy? Mm. Ah, I don't got time. But I love my wife. I do. I'm true to her, and I would never cheat. But there's something inside me, like... Like an animalistic attraction thing. Whenever I see a female figure, I'm drawn to it by this cosmic force. And I just gotta look. It's not that I'm doing anything or acting upon anything. It's okay to get hungry at work as long as you eat at home, you know? Let me explain. I'm driving down the street and it's pouring rain. And up in the distance, I see what appears to be a beautiful woman standing all by herself. I get a little closer. I can tell she got a nice pair of tits, too. <laughs> I keep driving. I'm drawn back to her. I can just make out her white rain hat. But why is she standing there in the pouring rain? Is she going to cross the street? Is she waiting for a bus? I don't think there's a bus stop up there. I start building a backstory. She flew in from Germany with her last dollar on a whim to meet the man that's been wooing her online for months. She came to the address she was given, but she'd been duped. He didn't exist. She stands there with her head hung low, wondering what she'll do next and how She'll get home, and if anyone will truly love her. I get a little closer, and I can see she's a little shorter than I like. But she got a cute little red raincoat on, and those tits are really standing attention through it. <laughs> I get stuck at a light, and I can't wait to get closer. I start fantasizing about every penthouse story ever. I'd pull up and say, why are you sitting out here all alone, little lady? She'd say, I was waiting for you. She'd get in my car and ask if she could shed her drenched clothes, but not the raincoat. We'd pull over under a big oak tree and make love as the pouring rain shielded us from prying eyes. Oh, the anticipation was killing me. The light turned green, and I, I couldn't wait to see this big-titted hottie in the red raincoat and white hat. So I sped up as fast as I could. 70 feet, 70 feet, 60 feet, 50 feet. Fuck, it's a fire hydrant! <laughs> So, growing up, I used to watch Whoopi Goldberg. At the end of her stand-up, she always had an important message. I don't know what Whoopi's thoughts would be, but I'd like to suggest that we as people really need to stop being so sensitive. Seems that we waste more time worrying about everyone's feelings than anything else. Are we that fragile of a society? Are we just a bunch of non-gender pussies that can't take an occasional razzing? Uh, we're changing the names of manholes, 
Everything is considered sexual harassment. I can't even ask a potential employee if they have kids. It's too much. I can't keep up. It's like the movies Footloose and Pleasantville are coming to life. A boring world where no one laughs, sings, or dances because that's also offensive. <laughs> this is not the world I signed up for. Look, I hope some of you found this funny, but I'm sure others were offended, but that's okay. That's the point. It's okay to laugh at yourself. If we're making changes, every time someone might have their feelings hurt, there won't be any funny left. And then what's left? One last thing before I go. Can I remind you, we are Americans. We do amazing things. And we've flown to space. We have self-driving cars. We have cell phones that carry a world of information at our fingertips. Surely, we're not going to let some fucked up bat soup concoction kill us. So pull up your bootstraps, America. Stop being whiny bitches. And let's kill this fucking virus. Thank you.